Our last video, what we did was we went ahead and we took it from raw MDF and we stripped it out and we routed it. And we got our and we got our basic profile down. What we're doing right now is we're doing our prep and we're doing two coats of Zinsser Bin Primer that I'm spraying with my new Wagner, which I don't know how I like it or not. I just got it. It's all plastic. Weird. But so far it's spraying okay. But I've got some of these done. We're doing two coats. I'm just doing a light, light first coat and uh, we'll kind of get our final look going on. Right now these are all eight foot strips, so I'm not painting edges because I'm gonna be gluing the edges together and that's just the way I think it looks best. Is we'll wood glue the edges and then we'll cut everything to fit. But uh, so right now I'm just doing a light coat, spraying it, you can roll it, but if you roll it, now not on the zinser bed, the zinser bed's pretty thin, but if you're, you know, thin your paint down, I do. It gets rid of the brush mark, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll get these painted up and we'll be able to show you a final profile here shortly. Thank you. All right, we got our first coat on, and it's gonna dry. Zinsser Bin, it dries really fast. Um, great part about Zinsser Bin is it's, is it's a shellac-based paint. It's not like your normal primer. Paint and primers don't. Paint and primers, all in one? Don't believe them, they're not right. Especially for anything high impact. Listen, these are not high dollar baseboards. These are MDF, but they're gonna look good. And what we'll do, We'll wait. I mean, it's dry to the touch right now. It'll be sandable in about 45 minutes. We'll come back. We'll come back with a 320 just to knock any of the high spots off, any little blobs, anything like that. But, you know, you can roll it. it you don't have to go buy anything. If you've got a roller, don't go get a thick nap. Go get like a 3 16th inch nap, the smallest you can find. Or one of those foam rollers. I don't like them, but some people can make them work. Um, or you go get you, you know, a Wagner sprayer, or if you've got an air compressor, they sell HVLP guns. Those are 40, those are 40, 50 dollars, you know, for the Husky brand. They're not much money. They do a great job. Um, but I'm a big, I'm a big proponent of spraying everything that you can. But if you don't like that, if you want to roll them, you can roll them. This is fine. The great part about rolling it is all this is sandable. And this stuff sands like a dream. Don't get normal Zenser, get Zenser bin. That shellac makes all the difference in the world. And then we're going to be painting this with uh, with an enamel paint, and we should be off to the races after that. All right, we're going to let this kick. Um, we'll come back. We'll do a little bit of sanding, and we'll pick back up there. All right, I didn't figure y'all wanted to watch me paint for 30 minutes, but uh, so this is what we started with when we bought the house. It's this old two and a half inch clamshell. I think that's the name for it. I'm not sure, but it's this old trim. It's been painted about a dozen times. It looks pretty bad, you know, and got our new wall texture and we'll do a video on that here before too long but after a couple coats of primer this is what we ended up with this is how it'll look and I'm really happy with that that's what I was going for and that only happens about 60% of the time I get exactly what I want but uh, this primer I cannot tell you how much of a difference a good primer makes you know, and how much I can tell you to not buy the paint and primer mix, especially for things that are going to be bumped with vacuum cleaners. And, you know, you're going to kick your shoes off and just things are going to run into these. And, you know, it's MDF, so it's not the, it's not, it's not a hardwood. It's not, a, it's just, it's a soft, soft material. But uh, two coats of Zinsser Bin Primer. We're not going to paint it right now. Um, we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to we're going to tear out this carpet, tear out the old trim, and we're going to go ahead and install it using about a half inch gap. And that should be that should be it for this one. We're going to go ahead and uh, probably going to talk to y'all a little bit about kind of some problems we ran into. We didn't run into many problems, but 
I'll explain some things to look out for and because I've done this a couple times I've kind of got my little process figured out but I'll kind of walk y'all through it and maybe if y'all got any gap if I got any gaps in the knowledge in the video I'll try to fill some of them in but super happy with it great looking craftsman trim and not a lot of money not a lot of time probably into these for 21 22 cents a linear foot how you can't buy anything for that and I think this looks as good as anything you can buy in the store but uh not sure if the camera's picking all that up, but sure hope it is. All right, thank y'all. So we went ahead, we got our two coats of primer on, and I just want to kind of run y'all through a little bit, little things to look out for. Um, MDF paint's really easy. It's easy, it's like a dream. It's the best painting wood product there is. However, whenever you put a rounded edge on it, this soaks up paint a lot more than the front. Um, it's fibrous, it's hard to see. Even if you sand it, you're still gonna get the hairs, like the hairs that bond. And that, that you're gonna to have to paint that first. Give that probably three coats. Uh, great part about the Zenzer bend is it sands, like I said, sands like drywall mud, it goes on. It's the perfect sanding, it's not a latex, it's a shellac-based primer. Best product in the world, I'll say that multiple times. Um, but, so, what I wanted to talk about in this video is mainly taking care of your edges and kind of the point of priming. The point of priming is not coverage. It doesn't matter if you've got the, the point is a protective coat that your paint can bond to. So it prevents the bleed, it prevents the smell. It, the point is don't treat it like paint, treat it like primer. Primer is very different. So, moving on from that, it, uh, whenever, uh, whenever I spread it, I got some little rough spots, kind of like some orange peel, and our first batch that we did, which is over there on the floor, um, it had, uh, we sanded between coats, and I only waited about 30 minutes, it was perfectly able to sand, and that turned out really well. Well, on this one, what I wanted to do is I wanted to see if I needed to sand between coats, and It's kind of hard to tell. I mean, for me, no one, unless, if they've got a magnifying glass to my baseboards, I don't know what to tell them. Probably shouldn't do that. But for me, I like the look and the feel more of the ones that we sanded in between coats. Uh, this one here, we could say, well, I'm gonna say it some more and kind of get the roughness off. I'm not, I'm not trying to expose it. I'm not trying, I'm not going for glass finish. These are baseboards. I'm going for a good finish, get rid of the orange peel. This is not a varnish, this is not a clear coat. This is primer. This is to protect the wood, get the paint, give the paint something good to bond to. If someone bumps into it, we're not peeling off like we got going on now with the really crappy latex paint they got on there. And this is a protectant layer. Um, once again, I left the, I left the cut edges you know, untreated because I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be wood gluing, you know, because they're only eight foot strips. So if I got a 12 foot wall, you know, I'm going to glue that together. And I used to use biscuits and stuff like that, but the biscuits would swell up, but that's another video. Um, but pretty much, so what I wanted to kind of leave you with is sand off your orange peel, sand between coats if you want a really, really fantastic job. And if you're using a sprayer, which I'm going to do a video on that next, it there's some finesse in that can go on that can make it really good or really bad and it's really easy to do. Um, the sensor band and a lot of the primers you use are really thin and they go on like a dream. We'll talk about how to cut some paint down and stuff like that. But uh, so, you know, so far part one and two, I mean, we've brought raw MDF to trim to a really good looking trim. I'm really happy with how everything looks. We've got a good profile that I like. I've got a little thinness up top, but that'll take care of with paint. Kind of the order of operations that we're going to be doing is we're going to go ahead and once again, we're going to get the carpet out of there. And I'm installing these just primed. I'm not going to paint them. There's too many nicks, you know, there's too much that goes wrong with carpet. It's a pretty high impact job as far as talking to corners and stuff. And we're going to install this and then we'll paint it once it's on the wall. And I don't know if that's the right way to do it. 
is how I want to do it. So that's how we're going to do it. And all right, thank y'all. If you've watched, we greatly appreciate it. And uh, all right, just go ahead and subscribe. Thank you.